Hi everyone, this is Claudine Helmuth and I'm here today to show you how to set up an SVG file to print and cut in the Shortcuts A Lot 3 software. I'm also going to be showing you how to place text so that you can make your own monogram initial or add any text that you like to any SVG file so it will print but not cut. So this way you can add text to invites, to boxes, all different kinds of things. I've got my printable kits and many of them have text added features. So this way you can use those features with those SVG files. So I've got a few little tips for you in this video. You can also download this kit for free and follow along with all of the steps. So to get started, I'm here in the Shortcuts A Lot 3 software and we want to just make sure that we have our mat and everything set up to our size. Since we are printing and cutting, we want it to be the size of our paper. So I'm just going to right click mat size and you can see mine is already at 8.5 by 11. And then we want to go to cutter preview options and just make sure that show print and cut registration marks is checked and show print margins is checked as well. Um, it doesn't matter about the other two, but those two you definitely want to make sure that you have checked. And you can see here it shows where my machine will cut and then it will also show in the preview and when I click the preview button, which is this piece of paper with the magnifying glass, you can see here it shows where my printer margin is. So that will help us with placing the files. So now we have our page all set up. So all we need to do to import our SVG is just click this SVG button right here and then we're going to choose our file. I'm going to start with the blue box and then there it is. And you can see here when it's in preview mode you can see the cut lines as well as the score lines. And let me zoom way in for you. and. When you go to preview and then click away, you can see here maybe very faintly the cut line is right here, but then the color of the file actually goes outside of the cut line and that's a bleed that I have created so that that way you won't get any white paper showing on your print and cut. If you just create your cut lines right up to the edge of your printed image then sometimes white paper can show because every printer prints slightly differently. Every cutter cuts maybe a millimeter differently from the next one. So I've created a bleed. So you would not want to auto trace these to cut them because they won't assemble properly. And I've done all of the tedious work for you. I've created the cut lines that are part of the file. And if I could draw your attention over here to the layers palette, you can see that they're actually in different layers. We've got the image layer and then we've got the cuts and the, and the folds layers, which are the score lines. They are the folds. So that's something I just wanted to draw your attention to because a lot of times people are used to working with print and cut files. They are used to tracing the image, but you would not want to do that. You would want to use the lines that I created for you or else your box will not go together properly because of the bleed. So let's go ahead and add some text to this. I designed these boxes so they can have a little initial on them. So when you download and make them, you can personalize them. So to add text, I'm just going to click the type tool that's over here on the left. And then I'm going to click on my mat and I'm going to type the letter B for boy. And you could even make a whole bunch of these boxes and spell out words and make it really cute. So now we've got our text placed. Now let's make some adjustments to the text. So I'm going to pull down my properties palette here and you will see all of these other palettes that appear. We've got down here at the bottom, we've got the text palette, we've got the appearance palette, and we've got a position and size palette. So let's change the font and I'm just going to go with something very simple that I know everyone has. Um, but you can choose any kind of font that you would like. I'm just going to do Times New Roman. I like a little bit of a serif font in there. And we can make it bigger here using the size. So I'm just going to go up 
a little bit until it's about the size that I want and then move it into place. That looks pretty good. You can see that there's this outline, this black line around my letter B and that is the stroke. And you could change this color and have it be any color that you would like it to be or I just prefer no stroke. So what I'm going to do is pull down from this pull down menu next to stroke and choose none. So you can see that goes away. And now we want to adjust our fill color. So I am going to change the color there by clicking on it. And then you can click all around on the color wheel here until you get the color that you want. And you can even play with lightning or darkening it that way. And if you get a color that you like, you can drag it down here and it will save your swatch, which is what I've done. This is great, especially if you use colors over and over again. So now that looks great. Let's click away. It looks like it needs to move just a little bit over. Anytime you're having a hard time selecting things, make sure that you're in your layers palette and that you are you can just highlight it over in the layer and then move it around. Let's make sure it's in the middle. Now, very, very, very important. We don't want this letter to cut out. We don't want our machine to be told to cut it. We just want it to print. So you want to, under cut line type, which is right here, you want to choose print, cut, print, and then it will print, but it will not cut. That looks pretty good. I think we are done with the front of the blue box. I'm just going to zoom out. So let's place this on our mat in a position where we could add another piece to this so that way we're getting the most out of our paper that we are printing and cutting with. So I'm just gonna highlight everything and I'm going to right click and choose rotate. And I'm just gonna type in 90 to rotate it 90 degrees and that rotates everything there and then I'm just going to scooch this up and at this point you want to check your preview because you want to make sure that you are within these registration marks so you don't want to be outside of these lines and here you can see where my printer margin is so I've got a little bit more room but I think that that's good for now so I'm just going to follow all of these same steps and add the pink box to our page Okay, there we go, that was easy. So now we have our two box fronts. And then for the other parts of the box, the sides and the bottom, you would go through the same import SVG process as well. So now we are ready to print and cut. And it's really easy to do in Sure Cuts A Lot. All you're going to do is press this button, that's the piece of paper with the scissors and up pops this cut settings window. Now down here in the lower left hand corner of the window, it, there's a little button that says print and cut. So you're going to click that and then you are going to click print. And then you will print your page. So here is our paper fresh from our printer and you can see it has printed the registration marks in the corner. So that's what's going to tell the machine where to print and cut. And then this is the kind of paper that I like to use. It's the Staples Photo Supreme matte paper. It's a great weight for making little favor boxes that hold cupcakes and treats. So it's heavy enough to hold those items, but not so heavy that it makes it difficult to work with. It's also really inexpensive and it prints nicely as well. So really, in my mind, cannot be beat. So now we are ready to apply our paper to our mat. So I've got my silhouette mat here and I'm just going to line up my paper so that it's in the same position as it is on my computer screen. So that way the machine will know where to find the registration marks as well as minimize any problems cutting. So you're just going to want to make sure that your paper has good contact with your mat. And now we are ready to feed it into our machine. To feed your paper in the machine, you just want to make sure that it is lined up with, there's a little groove right here 
on the side of the machine. So make sure that it's lined up with that and that it's within the rollers. And then you're just gonna press enter. So now it is loaded in the machine. And before you do anything else, you just wanna make sure that you have your correct paper settings over here, material, I've got card stock. So that's good. And then we're just going to press detect marks, which will detect our registration marks. And the registration marks were detected okay, as you can see here. So now the cut button is glowing blue, so it is ready to cut. So I'm just gonna press that. And now it is finished cutting. So all you do is just press enter to unload. And now for the really exciting part, we get to remove the paper and see our cuts. So we just peel it off. And then we just wanna remove the box pieces. And I like to just use this little spatula that helps get them off easier. And the score lines are already all done for us. So we can just go ahead and easily fold all of the fold lines on here. So I'm going to finish by printing and cutting the rest of the pieces for our boxes. And then I'm going to show you how to put them all together. Now I just wanna show you quickly cutting the cupcake tray. Now because the cupcake tray is a straight SVG, you can do that on your uh, leftover pattern scrap paper, or um, it doesn't even have to be a letter size sheet. It could be your 12 by 12 sheets of paper. So to do that, again, we just click the import SVG button and click the cupcake tray SVG. And then what pops up is you really can't see it because my vector lines are so light, but when you go to preview, you can see it there. So if you want to be able to see it, just go under view, show outlines only. And then when even when you're not in preview, you can easily see your cupcake tray. So I'm going to do two cupcake trays on a page, but you could also change your mat size because right now I'm at eight and a half by 11. I could change my mat size to 12 by 12 and I could fit a whole bunch on here. But I have a scrap piece of paper that's eight and a half by 11, so I'm just going to stick with that size. So let's open up another cupcake tray to add it to our page and then we'll just move that into place. And now it is ready to cut. And you do wanna make sure that you are within the registration marks, even though you are not printing and cutting, we are just cutting. We're going to click on the cut icon. And instead of clicking print and cut, we're just going to click cut. So you wanna make sure to have your paper already on your mat and fed into your machine before you click cut. And when you are ready, just click the cut button and then it will start cutting. I have finished printing and cutting out all of the rest of the pieces for both of the boxes, as well as the cupcake trays. So they are ready to assemble and you wanna make sure that you have pre-folded along all of the fold lines on all of the pieces. And then to put them together, I'm just gonna use my tape gun, but you could just use regular double-sided tape. It will work just as well. So let's start on the pink box. And both of the boxes go together the same way. Now, I don't know if you can see it, but there are letters on some of the tabs. So there's A and B. And then on this piece, there is C, E, and D. And the tape will only go on the lettered tabs, not on the tabs that do not have letters. So there are three tabs that do not have letters, and that's those ones. So all we're going to do is just apply the tape. There we go. And then you are going to take tab D and place it even so that the fold is even with this side of the box. 
and this is the same no matter which color box you are making and then just press it to secure so now we have one big piece and then we're going to take tab B and secure it to this side and we're going to take tab A and secure it to this side just press into place and I'm going to fold tab C and E in and then just fold it up and secure and repeat with the other side there we go so now we have our cute little box and this would be great just for even little uh, treats or favors or small toys and gifts but I think it's even cuter when it's a cupcake holder so let's make the mini cupcake holder. Now these boxes will only fit mini cupcakes for just a little tiny treat. And for the cupcake tray, you are just going to apply tape to all of these little tabs here and then secure the tab to the opposite side. It's pretty easy. There we go. And then you can open up your box and place your little cupcake tray inside. And now it is ready for a little mini cupcake. You can just place that in there. And there you've got your little cupcake inside and then you can just fold your lid closed. And I've gone ahead and finished the other box as well. So now you have a super cute little sweet treat box. You can download this for free at the link below. And think of all of the great uses that you can use them for. Mother's Day, Father's Day, girl's birthday, boy's birthday. You could even do a gender reveal party where people are guessing whether it's a boy or a girl. Really so many different ideas and even just for a nice little sweet treat for a friend or a special someone. So I really hope that you enjoy this little freebie box kit. I'd love to hear from you what you're using them for, how you've enjoyed it. Send me a little message or comment in the video below.